Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Mary Kosinski. She received her um, degree in graduate studies from the Cell and Developmental Biology program in 2005, and also did her postdoc here. So welcome back, glad to have you. Thank you. Tell me what you did here while you were at Vanderbilt. I was a graduate student and I did a small um, postdoc here and it was in the Department of Cell and Developmental Biology as you said and I worked with C. elegans actually um, and I studied worm sperm. We, um, Our lab identified a signal sent from the sperm to the oocyte. Um, to tell it to get ready for fertilization. We identified that signal and then I characterized how that signal was sent out, so. Interesting, so what did you do after that, after your postdoc? Um, after that, I uh, joined the tech transfer office here at Vanderbilt and um, that's kind of a long story, but a long story short is I was in the right place at the right time. My um, PhD advisor and postdoc advisor uh, left and went to Minnesota. For personal reasons, I couldn't move with him. My husband was gone in the military, and um, I was stuck here, you know, for basically less, about nine months or so. And nobody wants to take a postdoc for just nine months. <laughs> <laughs> so they, uh, through a series of contacts, I met someone over at the tech transfer office, and he said you know science, we need someone who knows science, come on over and talk to us. And I stayed there for about seven years, so. Okay, so what do you do now? Right now, I am the clinical director at a new startup company called New Cert Biopharma, and I our company is running a uh, phase two um, clinical study, and I am overseeing and directing that study, so. Okay, so what does that look like? Like, what is your day-to-day -day activities in clinical research? What does that look like? Meetings? You know, Craziness. Give me some yeah. more specifics. Um, so, first of all, there's no one day that's typical. <laughs> um, today, we had a crisis of a patient didn't take the correct number of pills that they were supposed to take, and they call me and say, Mary, what do we do with this patient? How does it affect your study if we take them out or if we keep them on or what do we do with it? So um, it is um, very different from the bench, um, but it is a lot of fun. It's very fast paced. We um, Basically what I did is I found all of the research sites. Um, I then had to go out and qualify all the research sites. You then go out and teach the research sites the protocol for our study. Um, and then as they start to en enroll patients, you monitor them and make sure that the study is going well. And then I'm also kind of the catch-all. Our company is um, you know, a startup company, so it's very small. So I'm, also, I'm involved in every aspect of the company from drug manufacturing to um, you know, filing the IND and the um, FDA requirements, and we work together um, with the chief scientific officer and uh, um, the chief operating officer, my boss, and we all work together and just try and get this clinical study underway, so. Okay, so I'm sure that there were some skills that you have used um, in your current job from your PhD training. What, what are those that you use today? Um, well, besides the scientific, um, you know, there's a lot of skills you gain from just doing your PhD, such as uh, organization. I mean, you have to be organized, um, and that's true for almost any career today, um, particularly in the job that I am doing now because everything goes through the FDA. You have to create a trail, all your documents, all your T's have to be crossed and your I's, I's dotted. Um, so that organization, the ability to juggle more than one thing at a time for sure. Um, but also um, I think one of the most important things is I am going out right now and training nurses and study coordinators about this protocol and what our company's vision is and why we're there trying to study this um, new therapeutic. Um, so the ability to be able to take the scientific knowledge that our company's founded on and um, I guess put that in a little bit more layman's terms um, and, and communicate that to um, these nurses and people who don't have that 
deep scientific, but they certainly know the medical field and they have more of a clinical arm, uh, research arm. Um, so that being able to translate that and kind of really help them understand like, well, why is it important that they take their medication three times, just like we said, you know, in the protocol, so. Okay. So what activities or coursework would you encourage current trainees to pursue if they were interested in being in clinical research like you? You know, um, I have no, again, I have no real background of clinical research. So when I was at the tech transfer office, I did a lot of preclinical pre work, um, which most of the trainees here, it's definitely, um, and some of it is even a stretch to call it preclinical work. It's like pre preclinical work. <laughs> um, certainly, that was me at the lab with C. elegans. You know, it's a long spin to an actual therapeutic from worm sperm. Um, but you know, I, I think I think what I would encourage um, new trainees is just be open to kind of any opportunity that's of interest to you. You know, so. Maybe there is a seminar series and a little bit more of the clinical aspect that, you know, if that's what you enjoy, I would encourage you to go and learn that. Because at least if you can learn the lingo, which is something that I had to do, you know, clinical research has a whole set of acronyms that are different than preclinical research that's different than basic science, you know. Um, so just if you could get yourself familiar with that a little bit and, and the whole um, FDA process, you know, how does that work? What, what does it mean to be a phase one versus a phase two and phase mm -hmm. three? Those kinds of things I think okay. would be helpful. So what steps did you take to get your current job in clinical research? You know, <laughs> it's funny. I don't think I, I certainly didn't plan to be where I am. Um, where I, my career has not, it's definitely not been planned out. It's just been a series of opportunities that have presented themselves um, that I have decided to take. So I went from tech transfer to another small um, startup company. Uh, which was uh, Vertex, mm -hmm. and that was a um, startup company to basically help hospital systems do technology transfer. So the theory there that the founders had was that um, there's a lot of innovation occurring by physicians mm -hmm. at for-profit hospitals, that it's never making itself available. And, um, you know, is is the reason it may not be is because the physician just doesn't know how to do it. They don't know how what the business aspect is. They don't know about patenting and protecting. So this company, Vertex, could come in and, um, and help them do that. Well, that was an area that I certainly knew well from the tech transfer office, but um, probably, you know, it just, it just didn't really take off due to a lot of the changes, I think, that were going on in healthcare. But by taking that... Um, step or risk, if you will, to moving to a small startup company allowed the opportunity for this startup company to present itself. So Vertex started working with New Cert to help them, um, again, advance their technology. And as I started working with um, the COO and the chief scientific officer, I was at the right place at the right time. They needed someone. Um, I was there helping them. They said, what would we have to do to make you come over here? So. You know, I think it's just, it was more of a, the, a warm body in the right place at the right time that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you do a fair share of networking. What does that look like for you? Yeah, um, and I would encourage that um, because you never know when um, the person you meet or is sitting across from or the, the student that you help or the, you know, informational interview that that you gave or you went on, um, when that person is gonna turn out and you're, you might need them or you might run into them. Nashville's a very small town, so I think a lot of the same people play in the same space. Um, so my advice is, yeah, network. If you're new to the town or you're new to trying to leave the bench, network, go to different um, meetings, try and find something that's of interest to you and then, you know, go after it, basically um, interview people, what do they do every day? Um, that's a great way to network too. People love to talk about what they do and how they got where they are. And you can get a lot of great information from you know what they did and, and things like that. Okay. 
So what do you wish you knew um, as a grad student or postdoc that you know now? <laughs> um, that's a good question. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I wish to know anything else. And I guess what I wish to know is um, that it, everything was going to turn out just fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think so many times as a graduate student and a postdoc, it's, um, it can be very frustrating. And it, it just, it's a very long process. It's very tedious. It's very tiresome. Um, and there are days I remember thinking, I am never graduating. <laughs> I am never going to get out of here. So I think if I could have known back then that, you know, it's all going to work out, it all works out, um, just relax and, you know, maybe enjoy it a little bit more than than you do. Um, I think I think people have a really hard time, you know, they're especially people in this field because they are pretty much the type A personality and want to get it done fast and be the best that they are. Um, I certainly encourage them to be the best that they are, but it, it doesn't have, it's okay. It took me a long time and it, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> okay, good. So tell me about your work-life balance. What does that look like for you? Um, everyone struggles with that, right? <laughs> um, that's really hard. It's, you know, I, I, the kind of person that I feel guilty when I'm at work because I'm not um, being the best mom that I can be. I feel guilty when I'm at home because I'm not being the best employee that I can be. Um, and things get crazy at work. Things get crazy at home. It's, um, I think, the advice that I was given um, that I can pass on is, you know, again, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, you know, you just have to, you have to take it and roll with it. You know, there are going to be times when you need to devote more time to your home life and you should, because you're not going to be a good employee if you've got things going on that you can't take care of at home. Yeah. There are times when you're going to have to devote time to your work and you, you've got to, you know, not be there at home. Yeah. And you're going to have to just, it'll be okay. The kids yeah. are okay, you know, <laughs> the, the husband's okay, the, you know, the house is okay. It, it's all going to be fine. <laughs> Great. So I think we all struggle with that. Um, I, I think especially women in science um, struggle with that. Science is very demanding, um, probably... I mean, so many more careers today, I think, are so much more demanding than when my parents were in their career. You know, it's it's just a different lifestyle. But again, it works out. You know, I think I think you need to have a good balance. Like I said before, you're not a good employee if you don't have a good home life. Yeah. You're not a good home person if you don't have a good employment life. So <laughs> for me, I think that um, I'm a better mom because I can show my kids that you can do it all. Um, it may not be all perfect, but we get it done every day. <laughs> it's all there is, right? Right. Thank you for coming back and speaking with us. We appreciate it very much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Sure.